بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers and sisters, inshallah and dear viewers, welcome to another episode Today we would just want to say a few things about this life and the fleeting uh, aspect of it uh, This is narrated by uh, Sheikh Shibli alayhi rahmatullah of many hundred years ago. He studied under 400 masters, meaning to say master teachers. And then he said, I studied 4,000 hadith, meaning to say 4,000 tradition in it going up to all the way to the message of Allah, peace be upon him. And he said that I chose from them one, that after four, studying 4,000 hadith in detail, I chose from them one hadith and acted in accordance with it, giving up the rest. And he said, my deliverance and my salvation was in it. And he said, Kana ilmul awalina wal akhirina kulluhu mundarijan fihi fak bihi. What he's saying here is that it was the knowledge of the, the, the first and the last, meaning the people of the old, and of the of his time, the modern time, all together in this in this hadith itself, and he found it that it was enough for him uh, to use this. And then he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "اعمل لدنياك بقدر مقامك فيها." اعمل لدنياك بقدر مقامك فيها. That work for this life according to the station therein, meaning to say that according to the time you have in this life. Your life is from your starting, meaning your birth, and till they, they bury you into the ground. This is what life is all about. All of these things that we are fighting for, all of these problems that we encounter, all of this life is from your birth into your death. That's why the companions looked at one of one of the men that was coming and he also became a companion. He was dragging his robe. He said, don't you know who I am? They said, yes, we know who you are. You are from a stinking fluid, meaning sperm and egg, and you will be dust. Meaning this is your beginning and this is your end. So don't think of yourself that you are so great and so high. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said that work in this life according to the station you have therein, meaning to say, how long do you have in this life to live? How many days do you have in this? It is out of the mercy of Allah that He has concealed your ajal, that He has concealed the time of your death. This is how, how Allah is merciful to us. We work, but what is the aim of work itself? What is the aim of work? We work every day from morning to night. But what is the aim of work? Questions that I have to ask you. Number one, to live and to take care. This is a very good and noble uh, act that you are doing. To take care. And to, and to live, meaning to say, support your family. This is a, is a noble deed. And as the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, he said, That all actions are according to intention and you will get whatever you have intended. So this is a very noble thing. Secondly, I want to ask, is it, was it for that only? Second thing I want to ask, was it to amass money? Mostly it is to amass money because we forget that we're only living in order to take care, in order to put a roof over our heads, in order, in order to have dignity, in order not to beg somebody, in order to be upright. Meaning to say that we are self-sufficient to a certain extent, not self-sufficient from Allah, not staghna, meaning to say that we, we have, oh, we do not need Allah, we do not need, a, we're not saying that. We're saying being self-sufficient from human beings independent from human beings, but dependent on Allah. So is it to amass money? Because this is what it comes down to. People keep saying, oh, I'm working to take care of my family and to live. That's not true. It is to amass money because they always want a cushion at the end. Thirdly, I want to ask you, is it to have a status? Because you don't like the job if they call you manager. If they just change that same job and put general manager, you feel better. Because this is how society has given us the stepping stone that you are going over a ladder or you become a, a, a whatever um, corporal, colonel, whatever, one star, two star, three star, until you, get, until you get 60, 70 years old and then they retire you and then you die of depression. And this is exactly how people want to give you ladders to climb because this, it's, you are just a piece in the, 
you are just a piece in the big machinery to keep it going. Fourthly, or is it because that you're told to do that? You have no other way that you're just told to get up in the morning, start working, and then stop working, and then start working, stop working, meaning to say that you have given no ability to think. Now I can actually diverge and go into the education system, what, what, which teaches us not to think any longer, where the, where the teacher always has the answer, the students is always dumb. Why is that? The teacher does not even listen to the students anymore. They have all the correct answers in the back of the textbook. And this is if you regurgitate 100%, you get 100% mark. It's no longer learning. It is actually schooling, like the school of fishes, and this is what they want. So I don't want to make a diversion in that, but this is how people get dumbed down to think that they're the only one being told what to do. So I'm told to do that, therefore I will do it. I have no self-worth if I did not become an architect, I did not become a bridge engineer, I did not become a medical doctor. This is, this is how society looks upon, and it's extremely stressful for people who might be good in in, in arts, who might be good in articulating, who might be good in journalism, something else other than these money-making uh, uh, adventures that we set, our, set ourselves up for. Now, people say that I work for my family. You always hear that, oh, I'm working hard, Joe. I'm working hard, Ahmed. I'm working for my family. You are not working for your family. I, I knew an, uh, a, a person once, he said, I work for my family. Oh, I paid $700 uh, uh, power bill. Oh my goodness. And now when the family is no longer there, he's still paying $700 power bill. What is the difference between them, then and now? Meaning to say it wasn't for the family to begin with. This is false most of the time. Somebody who says working for the family, you will see how they deal with their family also. It is concocted because the wife is not happy. You say you're working for the family, but the wife is not happy. Why is she not happy? It could be other strains, it could be other problems that she's not happy, but mostly it'll have to do with that you're not spending enough time with her, you're always going to business meetings, you're always flying somewhere, you have no time to give to her. There's no communication between you and her. It is fictitious most of the time because the kids have no bond with you, your child doesn't like you, doesn't, doesn't know you, runs away from you, doesn't hug you, doesn't kiss you, doesn't care if you're away. And the child is happy if you're away. Why? Because they have reprieve from your tyranny inside the house itself. It is also artificial and fake because you yourself not happy. Because you, you're wanting to presume that, that other people are thinking that you're happy. And one of, the, one of the writers, he wrote a book, You Can Be Happy Now. I picked it up at the airport, nothing else to do except to read. Uh, it was uh, Richard Carlson, PhD. That's, that's PhD, a doctor of philosophy, I guess. He wrote, and I think it, a lot of things that we already have in Islam, he just wrote it and just made a lot of money over it. But you have to give credit where credit is due. He said that happiness is a state of mind, not a set of circumstances. Happiness is a state of mind, not a set of circumstances. So what we do now, is that we think our circumstances say that we need to be happy. This is how we think. Meaning to say, I will be happy when I get my high school diploma. And then you say, I will be happy when I get my first degree. Then you say, I will be happy when I get my uh, master's degree. Then you say, I will be happy when I find a wife. Then you say, I will be happy when I have children. Then you say, I will be happy when I buy my first house. Then you say, I will be happy if I have my Porsche. I will be, and you always set up these circumstances. So the set of circumstances is not something or not indicative of your happiness. Happiness is a state of mind where you are. That's why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's not kathrat al-arad, it's not the amount of property you have, but ghina and nafs, meaning to say the richness of your soul, the richness of your heart, that you're happy of what you have. One day of food that you have, you should be happy. That's why Islam is a force. And especially nowadays, that it is a force to reckon with. 